Okay, so today is the day I'm going to tell you about um, Rodin Matrix Math uh, using the rhombic dodecahedron. I've got lots of uh, graphics to show you that I've been working on with Google SketchUp and all sorts of good stuff. So this will probably be a decently long video, so I'm sure there'll be more than one um, part of this video. So make sure you watch them all. Let's go ahead and get started. So this is the and symbol, uh, the symbol of enlightenment, Marco Rodin discovered this and with the symbol you can do lots of stuff um, you can obviously, everybody knows they're doubling circuit, halving circuit and they're 3, 9 and 6. Okay now what's important about this symbol that I'm going to be working with is the X, Y and Z axes. Okay, So how do you get those? Well you use the, what they call polar number pairs which would be 8 and 1, 7 and 2, Five and four. If you haven't ever done this, if you add up any number that's uh, directly across from uh, each other on this map, they all equal nine. So that's interesting. But with this symbol, you can get all axes of this math because this is three-dimensional math. Everybody's been working with 2D, which would be like this. Uh, it's not really 2D, although it is three-dimensional. When you look at it, you don't truly see the other axes. You only see two, vertical and horizontal you don't see what's going through the torus. So, I'm going to explain that to you and um, this will be interesting. So with these polar number pairs you can, uh, it's just multiples, multiples of themselves. So one times one, one times two, one times three, and you come out with these these numbers. You can see here one and eight on the top row, that's your x-axis. Let's go to the bottom. Five and four, that's your y-axis and 2 and 7 which is your z axes okay so take a good look at those numbers that is the pattern that is x y and z in this math so when you truly take vortex based mathematics and turn them into a three dimensional object not just the torus but layers of the torus when you actually look at that um, this is what you come up with okay so this is the axes x y and z here they are written out on a torus. You have X, which is your vertical. You have Y, which is your horizontal. Well, the orange here. And the purple blocks you see I've highlighted, and there's also some in the other axis points, uh, the twos and the sevens on this map. That's, that's coming at you. Okay, that's the X axis. Okay. Okay, so I have the X, Y, and Z axis. So I thought, okay, I can build this. Uh, and write it down on graph paper as the X, Y, and the Z. I can do that. So what I did is I wrote it down on the graph paper and I layered it. So when I flip my notepad like this, I go down through the axis points. I'm looking down the Z axis. Okay. So that's easy enough. Well, I wrote that all out and that worked great. That's the standard map where 1 and 8 are next to each other. That's the map that everybody's seen. Okay, so I thought, well, I'll just write down the next map. So I started writing down the next map with this being the top. I just turned it and made it the side. So I could write down all these numbers as I flip this and I could look down one edge and I could see the other axes. Okay, so as I was writing them down, uh, the numbers wouldn't match up. I couldn't, get, I couldn't get the numbers to work. So what I did is I took, if you look closely here, you see how there's two numbers side by side here at the point and only one here at the point and then two at the point and then one at the point okay well what this acts like is if you were to take off this here and just leave that point so you'd have four points instead of double numbers here you'd end up with every other number in this grid being filled out and, and you can look at that every other number as what I'm using on the other axes because I can only look at at that as every other number so I moved it over here, wrote it out, and the numbers didn't match up when I tried to look down the x-axis. It just didn't work right. So what I did is I just took the numbers that worked here and put them here. So I could look at the other numbers and uh, I could make the pattern because I knew what it was. It's 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5. As you can see here, uh, where is it? 
one two four eight seven five one two four eight seven five. You got your doubling and your halving, and your nine six six nine three three nine six six nine three three. Okay. So I filled in all the other patterns. And this is the map it gave me. Instead of having one and eight like I had here, one and eight, I have four and five together. But I still have the proper numbers. Okay. So I decided to write out the other axes, which would be the Y. Started writing them out. Could only use that every other pattern here to make it work. Guess what I come up with? Fours, uh, I'm sorry, twos and sevens are next to each other. So you have three maps, and as you look down through the layers, the maps just move. Okay, I'll show you that. First map, it's looking down the Z axes. Second map, third map, fourth map, fifth map, and so on, okay? So, something was a little fishy about this that I could not figure out where my other numbers went. I could not figure it out. So that's when I started to look at the rhombic dodecahedron, which Greg Volk talks about. Um, now, all the information I'm going to be telling you in the beginning of this video about the rhombic dodecahedron and um, how it kind of fits together, um, I believe Marco Rodin and Greg Volk, uh, those two have been working on this. I'm sure there's others also. But those are the, the main people, and I believe Greg Volk figured out that the matrix is made of rhombic dodecahedrons. So what is a rhombic dodecahedron? Okay, I'm going to show you something really cool that you can do with this shape. So here we go. Okay, what does that look like? Looks like a square, right? Well, from this perspective it does, but if I were to turn it, it's actually not a square. See that? If I return it again, it looks nothing like a square. If you hold it just right, it actually looks just like a diamond. There's a diamond. Okay. This diamond shape that you see right there, when you look at it at this perspective, that's what you see as a number. So, one number on here is what that looks like, a diamond. However that is. Okay? So this is a rhombic dodecahedron, and um, each one of these numbers on this grid, it's a, it's a diamond, if you looked at it in the proper sense. Each one of those is this right here. That's a diamond. Well, I couldn't figure out where those other numbers went, and when I looked at this, uh, I still couldn't figure it out. So what I did was, uh, got on Google SketchUp, made me a rhombic dodecahedron, which I'll show you how to do, and um, that's when I actually discovered where the numbers went and where they are. So I will show you that now. I'm going to show you what a rhombic dodecahedron is and um, how to build one. It's actually two squares. Uh, it's hard to see on here. I'll show it on my computer. All right, here we go. Fun starts now. Okay, so this is a rhombic dodecahedron. Okay, that's what it looks like. It's an interesting shape. You can make them on paper, with paper. It's pretty cool. Okay, so I'm going to show you how this is two squares. So that I cut the top triangular piece. Now if I delete each one of these pieces, you can see what I have is a square. That's actually the top of your cube. The piece I cut off is another part of your cube. If you take this top triangle and you were to take this point and put it on the inside of the cube and you do that to this whole rhombic, you come up with a another cube. take off another side so you can see what I'm saying. You can see how that forms. That's going to be a cube. Okay. So, that's what a rhombic dodecahedron 
looks like and, a cu and, and the cube within it. See how this triangle point sticks out? So, alright, so here are my numbers 1 through 9 that I'm going to be using for my structures. So you can see the numbers follow me. Uh, if I go up like this, the numbers don't follow me. I haven't figured out why, how to fix that. That's fine. I follow for this way. Uh, the white numbers here are positive and the black ones are going to be negative. So that's what one rhombic clear rhombic looks like. Okay, here you can see I have the every other number of my diamond matrix. If you look at it just right, you can see that these are diamond shapes, although in three dimensions they're actually rhombic to decahedrons. So this is what my first um, every other number of this first map looks like. 17, 417, 417. 258258. Eight, eight. The numbers that go in here would be 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5. Okay, so I'm missing every other number. That's what I was telling you about uh, when I wrote it down on paper. When I will look down another axis, I was having a hard time figuring it out because it's if you look at it with every other number, it fits perfect. It's it's acting as a square. If I were to put a square here and I would turn it and I'd put a square here, it would match. But since they're a different shape, they don't match up just quite right. Okay, now here is uh, the same thing, but I have my three maps. So I have my X looking down. If you're looking down the Z, that's what you'd be looking at if you're looking down it. If you're looking down the Y, this is what you'd see. And if you were looking down the Z, I'm sorry, the X, this is what you'd look, that's what you'd be seeing. So again, this is just every other number filled in. This is my basic building block um, and I'll show you why it has holes in it but for now this is just one direction so these would be all positive numbers if you're looking at it that way uh, you can see when I turn this uh, the numbers below it are hidden now you have the numbers on top show if I turn it back it's just the opposite that's what you would expect when you build a 3d model uh, anything behind it is hidden directly behind it. If you had just X, Y, and Z, that's what you'd see. Okay.